Well, hi there. On this hike, the mule and I continue our section hikes of the Colorado Trail by hiking north from Highway 114 to Salida, covering segments 17, 16, and 15. All right, Chuck, we're back out on the Colorado Trail. Took a day off. You ready for another 50 miles? We're going to do segments 17, 16, and 15. You yeah. ready for it? I'm very tired this morning, but... Tired? Yeah, we'll get a half mile in and yeah. we'll all better again. So we just completed, I just completed 77 miles to the north uh, from uh, Breckenridge down through Twin Lakes. If you want to see that video, you can click right up here. Last night, we stayed at my brother Jim and uh, his wife Nancy's house. They hosted us and we had dinner in... A nice soft bed, <laughs> yeah, and they uh, brought us out here to the trail. Say something good about Colorado. You should really come visit. Take a hike. It's awesome. <laughs> Take a so hike. You can always, you know, <laughs> a lot of good food, <laughs> fun, and friends. Yeah, we got a hot tub. You can stay at our place. <laughs> Again, for if, if 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 you'd like if you'd like their address and phone number, it'll be in the comments below. <laughs> Nancy, what would you like to say in your five minutes of five seconds of fame? Five seconds of fame. Uh, keep hiking. It's really fun. You guys are gonna go for a hike right now. We are with Luna. Come here. <laughs> Come here, Luna. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> It's about 9 a.m. We're starting from that uh, parking lot, like a good half mile walk up the road here, where it just follows the road and crosses back into the woods. Chuck had to uh, take a pit stop already along a tree. I'll meet him up here. So when I researched this hike, I researched where the water supplies were looked at the elevation profiles that sort of thing but I didn't look at the type of trail that it was here in the beginning in the first five or six miles it looks like I'm going up this road that's used for logging you can see you can see the equipment and uh, I could hear a chainsaw running back there but it's a pretty good climb but it makes it a little easier being on this road. Chuck's still behind me someplace. You know, when I curve off of this road or stop to take a dump, uh, I'll wait for him to catch up. But Chuck goes uphill a little bit faster than me, so I didn't think I should stop and wait for him. Well, he was dropping the kids off at the pool. So, he'll keep on going. He has his phone for navigation. We'll meet up sooner or later here. The Rio Grande National Forest. There's another trailhead, just another tenth of a mile up here. My brother was mentioning as we were riding up here that this area has a lot of beetle kill in the trees and you can just see it along here. All the dead trees. It just looks like a bad fire waiting to happen. On day one, we hiked 22 miles from Highway 114 to a little past Sergeant's Mesa. If you ever want to know what it's like to walk through a forest that has the beetle kill, this is what it looks like. Whew. Just these dead trees everywhere. You can tell it isn't a burn yet. 
stopping for some lunch. About 10 miles in, feels really good. I haven't seen chalk, I've been flying pretty good, but if I stop eat lunch, you should catch me pretty quickly here. So, some cheddar, sour cream, ruffles, some beef sticks, some water, and uh, when I was at my brother's house, his wife Nancy made some homemade chocolate chip cookies. I snagged, snagged a few of one of them for dessert, but it's a beautiful day out here. So I guess this section of the Colorado Trail allows motorcycles. First I've ever seen of it. Look what the cat rolled in. Cat rolled in? Cat drug in? I just ate lunch five minutes ago. Oh, <laughs> did you? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Came across this big opening while we're climbing up this big climb. And I turned back to look for Chuck, which you may be able to see him coming up here. And I see this view and it's like, wow. You have to remember to turn around on the trail, especially on climbs like this and look around because it's pretty darn beautiful. There's Chuck making his way up. Not gonna lie, it's pretty hot coming up through this field on that hill, but that is just beautiful. Still going up that big climb, I'm up, up to about 11,400. I had to stop and take a breath. And of course you turn around and look and look what you see. So when Chuck and I stopped for lunch there, I talked to him and we decided that we had it in us to make it up to the next water stop. The next water stop is was 12.2 miles away from where we we're in. So that'll end us with about a 22 mile day. And uh, it's not super easy hiking. I'm talking to you while it's somewhat flat here, but uh, we knew that the water was gonna be a little scarce when I did my research for this hike. So we're carrying extra water. I have a 1.5 liter smart water bottle and a, a 750 milliliter one. And things were going so smooth. I didn't hardly drink any before the 10 miles. So I'm purposely trying to drink some now, even though I'm not that thirsty, but there's, you know, since we're going northbound now, we're seeing a lot of the through hikers, either for the Colorado Trail or the Continental Divide Trail, the CDT, uh, that are hiking south. And I just saw one guy, he's almost out of water, through hiking the Colorado Trail. And, you know, there's a creek back there that he was hoping that there's gonna be water at, but uh, at least the part that I walked over, the rocks were wet, but you know, come pulling water out. So he's gonna be hurting because it's probably another six miles past that to get to water. So I have lots of water now, but you know, I got 12 miles and some big hills here. So I'm feeling a little guilty I didn't share, but I have to look after myself first, I guess. So anyway, still feeling pretty good. Uh, made it up that big climb. I think we have well, another big climb and several small ones. That's part of the gig, but uh, moving along well, we'll see you in a bit. So I gotta say segment 17 is a lot different than any uh, other segment I've been on on the Colorado Trail and it keeps on opening up to these big fields. I would consider this alpine or mountaintop, maybe I'm wrong, but Here's another one. Whew. Skies have changed. It started hailing for just a second. I put took off my backpack, ready to put on my raincoat, and uh, it stopped. 
And there's one thing I hate doing is wearing my raincoat when it's not raining. So I didn't put it back on. I think I'm going to have to put it back on though because now it's starting to rain again. Whew. I don't know. I think raincoats are more for keeping warm than keeping dry. So I'm gonna hold off as long as I can. Ow, that hail's still coming down. That lasted a long time. Well, the weather outside is frightful. I can't remember the rest of the words. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Except the snow kind of hurts. Yeah, whatever. Here's a good illustration of Colorado weather. Just walk through that hail sleet over there. Crummy. Turn around. Blue skies, baby. No, I haven't come to the water source. I don't know if it rained a little bit more up here, but it's been a pretty good uh, little creek coming down the trail here. So. I guess nobody's going to be out of water. I don't want to filter this though, it's pretty brown. Looks like I have a couple friends walking towards me. Keep moving, gal. Ooh, big mama over there. coming to the end of segment 17 and it's a pretty dramatic view. Shooting that time lapse back there, uh, truck passed me. He had run out of water. I still probably had over a liter, so I gave him most of my water. Uh, we've got about two and a half, 2.3 miles left until we get to uh, the next water sources where we are going to camp. Uh, truck is ahead of me. You can kind of see in this video, you can barely see him ahead of me. He's kind of struggling today, he said. That tells you a lot about him where whew, he can hike 22 miles even when he's struggling. He's a tough guy, a good guy. Chuck and I made it to camp. Little creek right over here, but not the best place for camping. There's a guy right over there that's probably in the best spot and we're giving him a little room. But uh, it's a little bumpy, a lot of rocks, a lot of cow patties. So it's not, uh, it's a kind of a rolling little bumps here where I'm gonna set up my tent, but we'll make do. It's uh, very cold and uh, we're looking forward to getting into our sleeping bags. There you can see Chuck in his big puffy. It's cold. On day two, we hiked 20 miles from Sergeant's Mesa to a little pass that Kluge's trail split.
morning. It's a beautiful morning to be in the Rocky Mountains. It was a cold night last night though. You know, we settled in after that rain and that uh, hail and it was really wet where we camped. Woke up this morning, my water bottles were half frozen. Um, there was frost on the inside and the outside of my tent. Uh, I packed up, I woke Chuck up. Uh, I couldn't wait around, it was too cold, so I had to get moving, meet Chuck up on the trail. It's gonna be a beautiful day of hiking. Come on along. I have to say segment 16 is a lot more beautiful than 17 was. I just came to this little prairie. You can see the uh, trail that goes down through here. Kind of leads up that way. Then you look up. And this is the view. But wait, there's more. There's more, wait for it. Wait for it, there's the trail I came from. Stopped to do a time lapse here on the saddle area and uh, Chuck caught up with me. What are you doing here Chuck? Uh, I'm playing windsock with my oh. top quilt. I'm trying to dry some cool ice. Yeah we had like ice balls inside of our tents so we're both set up here getting some sun and some wind drying them out. Passing through the Marshall Pass trailhead. A lot of people here. I think probably about 200 mountain bikers passed me going the other way um, in that last four miles before I got to Marshall Pass. You know, it is the Saturday of Labor Day weekend, so to be expected. But I haven't ate lunch yet. I think there's a little water source up here. I'm gonna stop. Hopefully get some water and uh, eat some lunch. Made it to the wonderful surroundings of the Lars Brar Ditch. Such a beautiful place to stop and have lunch. You may ask, why did I stop here? Well, right down here, underneath this road is a culvert with a really good stream. So. Resting, having my potato chips, beef sticks. I'm gonna have to climb about a thousand feet over the next two and a half miles, middle of the afternoon. So I'm resting up. Finishing up lunch here at Lars Mar Ditch. <laughs> Great place for lunch and look who sneaks in. It's the water. water. Climbing up the big hill. Unoccupied ATV. Should I?
come to one of the only shelters on the Colorado Trail. It's a three-sided rustic little shelter, but it sure would be nice if it was raining to hide out in here, socialize with your friends. You can sleep in here, a couple people. Man, this last section of the trail is probably one of the most beautiful I've been on in the whole Colorado Trail. Almost to the top. This trail's pretty difficult, but look at the view. Trail goes up to that ridge there. I don't know if I follow that ridge or if I go down back to the right, but I'm glad I'm almost there. Well, Chuck, we made it to the intersection of where the East and West Collegiate Loop split off. Which way do you think we should go? Chuck and I came down the hill just a little bit to the first water source set up camp. Sometimes out here, uh, you know, you can camp anywhere you want, and sometimes the camping is less than perfect. But we're, we came down to the water source, found a couple spots. Here is uh, my setup. The duplex from z -Packs. Inside, I've got uh, the Nemo Tensor long and wide uh, pad. Xpid pillow, 20 degree top quilt from UGQ, and of course my light AF backpack, and let's go up and see Chuck. Grab my water filter. Chuck, are you decent? Here's Chuck's. Chuck looks like he's got a little bit better spot than me. I'm using my hand warmer. Your crotch? No. No. My food bag. What are you having for dinner tonight there, Chuck? Potatoes. Boring. I know. Chuck's also got the duplex. Chuck popped a hole in his air mattress last night and had to repair it. And then I go back out here. This is where I'm eating dinner on a log. My chicken Alfredo. Rehydrating the water source is right up the trail here. Nothing too fancy, but it's wet. On day three, we walked the final eight miles down passing Foose's Lake to Highway 50. This is how Mule hikes all the time. Just looking at his phone. Checking the stocks, man. Oh yeah. Checking your uh, Bitcoin. Yep. End of another good hike. 50 miles for this segment. Walking over a creek right now. We're just finishing with a three mile road walk. But uh, 
this is probably one of the more enjoyable segments of the Colorado Trail that I've done. What'd you think about it? Yeah, it was very, very scenic. It was a really cool section. A lot of parts where you turn around and you're just kind of amazed all over again. So it was great. All right. Thanks for coming along on this hike. Mule, we've now done over 300 miles of contiguous Colorado Trail. Woo, buddy. Hey, if you like this video, oh, hey, if you can walk up hills for me, <laughs> hit that subscribe button, kick the bell notification. Whoa. Check out our BS and nonsense, Instagram, Facebook. Check out the Midwest Backpacker merch on Teespring. And this video is done because I can't breathe. We'll see you on the trail.